Hi, I'm Mark Brown, and this is the Platformer Toolkit, an interactive game design playground all about platformer character controllers. So, I want you to meet Kit. She's the protagonist of this platformer, but I'm really not happy with the way she controls. Have a play and see what you think. You can use a keyboard or a controller. Hit the continue button when you're ready. This doesn't feel great, right? Kit is really slippery, her jump is floaty, and the whole thing just feels a bit flat and lifeless. So let's start tweaking things. You can now open the toolkit and get to work. All right, welcome to the toolkit. This is where we can tweak Kit's variables to change the way she works, giving you a chance to see how different stats can change the way a platformer feels. We'll start with the run. You can grab this handle and move it up and down to change how fast Kit runs. And then this handle changes Kit's acceleration, or how long it takes to reach that max speed. And this one changes the deceleration, or how long it takes Kit to stop when you let go of the controls. Have a play and see how it changes the way Kit moves when she's on the ground. You can run around while the toolkit is open or close it to return to the level. Hit continue when you're ready. So a really long acceleration means you have to build up and maintain speed, like Sonic the Hedgehog. But a really short acceleration gives you a character who is super snappy and responsive, like in Celeste. There's no right answer here, it depends on the sort of gameplay you're after. For deceleration, having the character slide when you let go of the controls can make it easy to tumble off the end of platforms. As for top speed, well, that kind of depends on how much you can see, so let me unlock the camera panel. Click over when you're ready. Okay, so here we can change how the camera works. We can change the zoom level. A wide view might be good for a very fast character, for example. In the top right, we've got a few sliders. Damping makes the camera slowly ease into position rather than snap into place. And look ahead makes the camera, well, look ahead because the traps and pits in front of you are more important than what's behind.
there's a reason why game designers call it the three C's. Character, controls, and camera. The way we track and show the character's movement is just as important as the movement itself. But now, let's move on to the most critical part of any platformer, the jump. I've unlocked the panel, so click over when you're ready. Okay, this is the jump panel. The yellow curve illustrates the player's jump arc, and you can change that by dragging these handles. This one changes the maximum height of the jump, from a short hop to a big springy leap. And then this one changes how long it takes the player to reach that point before coming back down to the ground. There's one more handle though. In many platformers, the character drops faster than they jump, which can be achieved by increasing the player's gravity on the way back down. This handle lets you add a downward gravity multiplier, so see how that feels. Variable jump height has been in platformers since Super Mario Bros. The longer you hold down the jump button, the higher the character goes. To achieve this, we simply detect when the player lets go of the button and then apply a strong downward force to bring the character back to Earth. Getting the perfect jump can take months of tweaking and testing. It's the most important and common action of pretty much any platformer, and so a floaty, imprecise, or fiddly jump can destroy the fun of that game. Hopefully you've found some numbers that work for you, but we're not quite done yet. Let me unlock the assist panel for you. let's talk about assists. These are almost invisible tweaks and changes that bias the game in the player's favor. Click on the question marks to learn more about how they work. You can also slow down time while on this panel to see these subtle tweaks working in slow motion. Under normal conditions, we just keep increasing the player's full speed until they hit the ground. But if you've got really tall platforms, this can turn the character into a speeding meteorite. A terminal velocity will limit the player's full speed to give the player more control as the character drops. When you press the jump button, the game checks if the character is on the ground before letting you spring into the air which normally works great, but it can mean you'll miss the jump if you're just a few pixels off the ground. These two features remedy that. Coyote Time lets the player jump for a few frames after running off the edge of a platform. Meanwhile, if you're coming down to Earth and press jump before you hit the ground, Jump Buffer will remember your input for a few frames and then issue the jump as soon as you land.
platformer is all about testing the player's skill and mastery of the controls, but that doesn't mean it needs to be pixel precise. That can feel frustrating and unfair. We sometimes want to recognize the player's intention rather than their exact commands. And so small cheats in their favor go a long way. Anyway, it's time for the final panel. Let's get juicy. There's some game design wisdom that says if a player does something a lot, make it feel good. And in a platformer, that's running and jumping. So on this panel, you can make various tweaks to the character's presentation, including particles, squash and stretch, a trail, a tilt, and sound effects. You don't always want to crank each handle to the max, sometimes a little goes a long way. Making a platformer feel good is largely about tweaking numbers, cheating for the player, and adding juice. And so now you have all the tools you need to make the character feel the way you want. And now it's time for your final test. I've just unlocked the full level, and I want to see if you can make a character that feels good to control in this environment. Play with kits speed, air control, and juice to get something that feels tight responsive and fun. Now, it's important to note that in real game development, the level would usually be made to suit the character, not the other way around. So this stage will only support a very certain type of platformer hero. But give it a go and see what you come up with.
there we have it. As a special treat for making it this far, I've unlocked preset drawers on the running and jumping panels, which will approximate the stats of characters like Super Mario and Super Meat Boy. Try them out and see how their different stats change the way they feel. With all that being said, have fun, and thank you so much for playing the Platformer Toolkit.